Action continues here on the opening day, officially, of the 2022 Rogue Invitational. The CrossFit athletes went running yesterday. They're going to do some skiing today. Glad you're still with us here, everybody, at the Dell Diamond in Round Rock, Texas. I'm Sean Woodland with Adrian Conway. Mentioned the one event yesterday, but now as we get to Dell Diamond, this is where the competition really does begin. This is where it begins. We've only got 10% of the competition done and underway, and now we're really into the thick of mixed modal madness, which is what we all know as CrossFit. Event number two for the individuals is Ski Bar, and this is an up and back chipper with a little bit of a twist. More on that, but what are your keys to success for this? You know, there's a couple keys to success that come to my mind, and the first one is that it's, it's literally gonna be a gut check for these athletes, all three of these movements share a very similar theme of taxing the abs and the midline. So we're gonna see who deals with this redundancy the best throughout this workout. And then of course, the second is grip and rip. A lot of times the ergs themselves don't carry a ton of value or an opportunity for separation. In this workout, the ski certainly matters. I mentioned that there is a little bit of a curveball in this event and for more on that, let's go down to Kiki Dixon. You're right, Sean. They got a surprise this morning during their athlete briefing. On paper, it looks straight line CrossFit, as Adrian mentioned. The surprise, they've got a wooden log that they have to do those bar muscle-ups on. It's four inches in diameter, definitely going to come to play with the grip and the way that they approach their bar muscle-ups. It'll be a lot of fun to watch. Thank you, Kiki. There is Tim Paulson, who qualified for this event through the qualifier and had one of the more memorable moments at the CrossFit Games when he knocked out 30 calories on a Rogue Echo bike in less than 30 seconds. Full send Tim. <laughs> it seems like an appropriate nickname. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise for the athletes at heat number one. And number 10, Timothy Event number two is Ski Bar. It is presented by Concept2. We are having some internet issues here at Dell Diamond. As soon as those get solved, we will have our scoring and graphics back up on the screen for you. We will do our best here in the booth to keep you updated on everything that is going on. We will start with the 20 bar muscle-ups as Cole Sager is adjusting his GHD. Yeah, and then those athletes are gonna jump into a 40 calorie ski. Then they're gonna advance to an 80 GHD sit-up Another 40 calories on the ski, and then they'll finish with, of course, those fat bar, wooden bar muscle ups there for another 20 reps. And they will get to mess with that wooden bar right out of the gates here. Yeah, I love this element of the test. And we are underway. Event number two. For the CrossFit men. Number two, getting ready to start off on 20 bar muscle ups. As you saw earlier with Kiki. And we got Noah Olson right here in the middle of the screen, right in lane six. And, and Noah's notoriously recognized as someone who excels with gymnastics, something like a movement, similar to what we're seeing here, bar muscle ups. But now we've got this twist and I'm really interested to see how he responds both physically but also psychologically to this test. Does he know how to game it appropriately? 20 reps total here, and so far Noah Olson has yet to take a break. Doesn't seem to be having any trouble with that wooden pull-up bar. Nick Matthew in his signature crop top is next to Olson. Cole Sager is in the black sleeveless shirt. Chandler Smith in the red top. He's out there. Great to see him back in competition. He missed a chance going to the games. He was dealing with that medical issue that he had at the Granite Games that kept him from qualifying. And he is taking his first break. Yeah, and we see the athletes chalking up, trying to figure out ways to navigate this new structure that they're having to do these bar muscle-ups on. And you'll notice all the athletes have what's called a suicide grip on the bar, where their thumb, instead of being wrapped around, is layered on top. This increases the surface area of their hand and allows them to get up and over for more consecutive reps. Noah Olsen will be the first man to move to the 40-calorie skier. Again, we're having some technical issues with our scoring and graphics as soon as those are solved. We will have those on screen for you as Chandler Smith is wrapping up his set of 20 and he will join Olsen on the skier. What I like about that smooth transition is that he, he, he hit the ground jogging, which means he was anticipating and understanding the value of this ski component here as element two. Cole Sager now the third man to the 40 calorie ski. 
we're going to start to notice some differences here in approaches with the ski. We want to notice the hips come back. The athletes load through the heel of their foot every stroke. And some are going to have a higher stroke rate. Some are going to have a slower stroke rate trying to pull with more power. Nick Matthew in that blue top, now middle of your screen. He is there as well. As are Jorge Fernandez, Yonikoski, Heiner Kapalainen, and now in lane two, Jack Farlow. Tim Paulson is now done with his set of 20. Paulson and now Scott Tetlow will be the last man to get through those 20 reps. Noah Olson, who is in the middle of your screen in the black shorts, no shirt. He was the first man to get to the 40 calorie ski, followed by Chandler Smith and Cole Sager. And I'll say it's really easy as both an athlete and a fan to get emotionally involved in a workout like this really early. And the truth is that we, we almost want to be at this very controlled, fast but controlled pace as an athlete and have an understanding that Boy, the workout really gets going about 50 reps into these GHD setups. Noel Olson is into his final five calories, then he will move to the GHD where he will have to complete 80 repetitions, and then it's back to the ski erg, and then he will finish up with 20 reps again on those bar muscles. Noel Olson maintains his lead, first man to the GHD. Chandler Smith is now moving along with Cole Sager. So Sager has pulled even with Chandler Smith for second place in this first of two heats for the men in Ski Bar presented by Concept2. Now again, as, as we start to watch, even the, the similarity in these movements from the ski where they're pulling down on the erg, they're hinging at the hip, which causes them to flex their abs, and then of course they're gonna advance forward, and we see the GHDs going down and understand that that can be a huge taxer of both the quads, hip flexors, and the abs. Yonikoski in the white hat, far end of the field, is moved into fourth here. It's Koski, Sager, and Chandler Smith trying to chase down Noah Olson. And in lane three, that's Jorge Fernandez. Jack Farlow is moving. Tim Paulson was able to make up some ground on the left side of your screen on the skier. He has now gotten to the GHDs. Heinrich Hapalainen is there as well, leaving Scott Tetlow in lane nine as the only man left on the skier. Noah Olson, Cole Sager, and Chandler Smith about 10 reps clear of the men chasing them right now. 80 total repetitions here on the GHD. Again, as soon as our scoring system is back online, we will get that on screen for you. And I'll tell you right now, you can notice two different variations of this GHD setup going down. We've got Cole Sager who's extending through his quads where he straightens his legs. That's going to allow some of the hip flexors to do the brunt of the work to pull him upright versus Noah Olson keeps his knees pretty soft throughout the movement. And that tells you that he's pulling himself upright with more of his abs. We'll see how this plays out on the back half of this workout. Also continuing to lead, also coming in at ninth place overall after finishing ninth in the opening event that took place yesterday. Smooth as fast as on these sit-ups. Um, it's, it's really easy to get caught up in racing head-to-head, -head, rep for rep. And we've got to uh, keep in mind these athletes have a sense of self-preservation for what's left on the floor. So while it might look like they're trying to get these 80 reps done as fast as they can, they're trying to go fast but conserve as much energy as possible. Olsen is into his final five. Chandler Smith had his judges hand go in the air right behind Olsen's. So the two of them are about neck and neck. And now Chandler Smith ahead of Noah Olsen as the two head back to the skier. And Smith getting to work first. This is exciting when you see a change of lead that way. You've got to wonder what was the difference there? And can Chandler sustain this intensity to keep Noah at bay for the rest of the workout? Noah Olsen and Chandler Smith, two very good friends, now find themselves battling for the lead in events number two here. Here comes Cole Sager, solidly in third place. Sager and Smith got to the GHDs at about the same time. Now 40 more calories on the skier. 
not much difference technically from what we see in these athletes on their ski. It just begs us to question, what are those monitors telling us? How, how different of a pace are they holding? Are they able to increase as they go or are they starting to falter off? And we'll start to get an idea of that here in the next 40 seconds as we watch these athletes get closer to finishing up the ski. With as well as Olsen did on those first set of 20 bar muscle ups, you gotta think that Smith has gotta build a little bit of a lead here to hold him off when they get to that final movement. Yeah, he's gonna probably need to bank at least three to five reps to stay ahead of Noah on this particular movement. Scott Tedlow in lane nine has made up a ton of ground. He's on the far right side of your screen next to Chandler Smith. Tedlow was one of the last men off the skier going into the GHDs, and he was among a group of men who just got to that skier. Now here comes Nick Matthew. And you'll see there, Tetlow, he, he's got a pretty high stroke rate, which tends to work in most athletes' favor when it comes to using the skier. Instead of the slow, powerful strokes, they tend to save it and conserve a little bit more energy by pulling less hard more frequently. Yonikowski is now pushing both Chandler Smith and Noah Olson. Smith and Olson's judge's hands are in the air, but Koski is, looks like he's making up some ground here, and it's gonna be Noah Olson done right behind Chandler Smith. And here's our race, folks. This is where we really get to see how much can these athletes tolerate the redundancy of all they've overcome throughout this workout and continue to link together big sets. Noah Olson continuing to keep up a good pace on those bar muscle-ups, taking a break for the first time. Chandler Smith is now to work along with Cole Sager. So the top three that were early on in this event remain the top three here. This is where a hidden element of the, the false grip comes into play. Athletes that have trained it, even though it hasn't been directly demanded of them, will have an advantage here. And that is where the, the vast majority of your hand or wrist stay on top of a bar, and it allows you to hang on and link together more consecutive reps. Yonikowski is now on to his final set of bar muscle ups as well as Olsen is taking another break. There's Cole Sager working through his final set of 20. Yeah, Noah's doing a great job at keeping the majority of his fingers on top of that four inch wooden beam, which is gonna become an ob a great obstacle for a lot of these athletes in the latter 20 reps of this workout. Jorge Fernandez is making his way back to the bar muscle ups, as is Jack Farlow and Scott Tetlow. Apollinen and now Tim Paulson were the last two men on the skier. Paulson on the right side of your screen going back for his final set of bar muscles. Now, Noah Olsen just failed a rep. He's off the bar. Matthew failing a rep. Sager continuing to move. Judge's hand is in the air for Chandler Smith. He has five to go here. Okay, and this is where you've got to understand. Meet yourself where you're at. Quick breaks. Get back up onto that rig as fast as you can. Even if you have to come down more frequently, it's about consistently chipping away at these reps. Chandler Smith only has three reps left. He is your leader right now. Noah Olson's judge's hand is in the air as well. Olson with four remaining. No rep now for Chandler Smith. Could open the door for Noah Olson. Three left for Olson. Two left for Smith. Two singles could do the trick. You got to get up there and get done. Olson fails another one. Smith is up. He's got one to go. And welcome back, Chandler Smith. He will take the opening heat of Ski Bar. 11 minutes, 4.54 seconds unofficially for Chandler Smith. <laughs> Noah Olsen trying to hold off Cole Sager. Sager now has one rep remaining. Olsen gets through his. He will take second in the heat. Sager is done. And Sager will come across in third place. Leaves Yonikowski as a leader on the field. He has now, it looks like, maybe one or two reps remaining. So now Koski is done. He'll come running into view here on the right side of your screen. What a race between those top three. And we needed to see that from Chandler. We, we wondered who would show up here psychologically, physically, and he came to compete. He, he's buying to get back into that, that last heat of the day and into the top ten. 
Only four men get inside that 12 minute time cap and it's Chandler Smith. 11 minutes, 4.54 seconds to set the time to beat with one heat remaining. And great to see Chandler Smith back in competition as the two friends share a laugh there. Great battle between the two of them that Smith was able to take late in that heat. The only thing I gotta say about Chandler is he's gotta work on that baseball slide, man. <laughs> he came across a little sticky across the grass. Maybe he thought it was still more slick than, than it really was out there. Great execution by him, though. Chandler Smith is definitely a great hero to have. Four men inside the 12-minute time cap. Smith, Olsen, Sager, and Koski. Heinrich Hapalainen and Tim Paulson making up some ground. Finishing fifth and sixth unofficially in that heat. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon, who is with your Heat 1 winner, Chandler Smith. Chandler, congratulations on taking your heat. You're the first athlete I've had a chance to talk to about that log, four inches in diameter. How much did it impact what you were doing with those bar muscle-ups? Um, it definitely completely changes the nature of that movement, but um, luckily, like, I was in the Army, we have 155 tank shells, so anybody, excuse me, 105, sorry guys, um, that's like a similar diameter, so I'm still going to say that having experience with those in the Army helped me out with that. Now, you've been here every year for the Rogue Invitational. What's it like to be back on this competition floor? Uh, it's the best competition out there, especially on the individual side. It's just a blast to do. So getting to hang out with all my buds and do some fitness in between is as good as it gets. We're happy to have you, and congratulations. Hey, thanks, everybody, for coming out. Super good to see you. Chandler Smith. Let's go wait and see if his score will stand with one heat remaining here. Unofficial scores, 11.04.54 seconds for Chandler Smith. Noah Olson will finish in second, followed closely by Cole Sager, and then it's Yona Koski, the only other man to get in inside of that 12-minute time cap. We will reset the field, and the second and final heat here for the men is getting set to start. And now the athletes taking their spot at the starting line. Justin Medeiros, the defending Rogue Invitational Champion in lane six. And we are underway. Event number two presented by Concept2 is Ski Bar start with those 20 bar muscle ups. Yeah, 20 bar muscle ups and then we're going to get into the, the, the vast redundancy that we saw from heat one with abs, abs, and more abs. These guys getting their midline tested throughout the entire workout here at each and every one of these. And then we got to see firsthand too, it's grip and rip on that ski and it's nothing to shake a stick at. We saw the lead even be uh, transferred from athlete to athlete within the modality itself. So it is important in this particular test. Now Jason Hopper on the right side of your screen in lane nine in the black top, he is your overall leader after winning event number one, the Texas Trail that took place yesterday off-site. And we see different strategies already coming into play. We see athletes breaking these up even more generously than we saw in Heat 1. You think, Sean, these guys were actually watching from the sidelines and taking a note, a note or two. Pat Vellner, Ricky Garrard, and Bjorvin Carl Gumitz in your top three right now. Garrard through 17 of those 20 reps. Garrard is in the black top and black shorts in lane number seven. And there is Pat Vellner on his final rep. So Pat Vellner, who is your 2020 Rogue Invitational Champion, will be the first man to the skier along with Ricky Garrard. The two of them getting started at exactly the same time. Here comes Bjorvin Carl Gumitz at the bottom of your screen. 200 total repetitions here. When they hit the 60 rep mark, that is when they will move on to the GHDs. And it's Ricky Garrard with about a calorie lead right now over Pat Vellner, though Vellner keeping things tight here on the second movement 
in this event. 11.04.54 seconds, that's the time to beat. Belongs to Chandler Smith from heat number one. In the background, you can see Jeff Adler failing a rep. And I can't help but think, Pat, Pat shows up with this event with a little something to prove. Um, not that he had an unsuccessful games experience uh, in 2022, but he's one of the top competitors in our field, and it seems like at times we can kind of put him towards the back a little bit, and we want to see what he can do with stringing together a good 10 events consistently. There we get to see firsthand exactly the wattage that Ricky's putting out. Notice he's got a really steady stroke. Looks like he's finding plenty of space to breathe, probably trying to emphasize using those hips and those lats quite a bit in order to save his midline for these GHD sit-ups that await. Pat Velder through 52 of the 200 total repetitions. He is coming into his final five calories. Velder looks to be the first man onto the 80 GHDs. And Velder is done. Velder needs to hit the 140 rep mark before he makes the turn and heads back to the ski erg, and now he gets to work on his 80 GHDs. Ricky Garrard stays in second, Roman Krennikov in third, along with Bjorven Carl Gubitz, and here comes Ricky Garrard. And Pat really put together about a 12 second lead there, just in the difference that he put in on that ski erg. So that's, that's where it comes back to the fact that the, the erg does matter, especially when you know you're gonna go back there after these GHD sit-ups. Roman Krennikov and Saxon Panchik are heading to the GHG. Now here comes Sam Quant and now Justin Medeiros in that purple shirt is onto the GHD. Only three men are on the ski erg. It's Lazar Jukic in lane two. And now in lane eight, Jeff Adler is done along with Jason Hopper. Medeiros has a ridiculous cadence going on right now with the GHD sit-up. If you'll notice, by the time he's doing about three reps, Ricky's doing about two. Um, and this is a great place for him to have an opportunity to make up some ground on those that were leading him into this particular movement. Justin Medeiros creeping up the standings here in this heat, now in sixth place. Trying to reel in Sam Quant. Pat Vellner continues to lead through 96 of the 200 total repetitions here and counting. Yeah, and you'll, you'll notice it, it, this cadence here between most of the field is pretty similar. And then you've got Justin with just a faster turnaround from the top to bottom. His eyes are closed. He looks like he's in a bit of quote unquote the zone or maybe his happy place, but he clearly likes this movement. Darius creeping closer to Sam Quant. Roman Krennikov in the top four, but now the top three athletes starting to separate themselves. Ricky Garrard, Pat Vellner, and Bjorvin Gubinson are your top three. Ricky Garrard looks like he may have taken the lead now from Pat Vellner. 140 repetitions. It's a number they need to get to. And there's a little bit of gamesmanship taking place here too, right? Each athlete has a bit of self-awareness to the point where they may know a tempo that's just too fast for them. When they're really thinking about how difficult those 20 initial bar muscle-ups were to navigate with this new apparatus, and perhaps saving a little energy here, letting the field make their moves so that they can finish faster at the end. So Pat Vellner is going to be the first man off of the GHD. He maintains his lead over Ricky Garrard, so a score a little bit behind of where he is right now. He is through 140 of the 200 reps. Now 40 calories on the skier for Velder. Pat hasn't relented any of this lead. In fact, he might have opened up. And now Justin Medeiros has moved just ahead of Ricky Garrard. So that pace that Madeira's had on the GHD's paying off as he has now moved into second place in the heat. Quant and Krennikov onto the ski, as is Bjorvin Carl Gubitson and Saxon Panchik. And this is where, this is, this is what makes Justin great 
in my perspective, is that he has this ability to really seize the moment in the middle of a workout when a lot of guys start to falter or they make a mistake with pacing. He comes in strong, understanding his own capacity to a really high level. Pat Velder is your leader. Ricky Garrard and Justin Medeiros are fighting for second place. Once they hit the 180 rep mark, that's when they will move back to that wooden pull-up bar for the final time for 20 bar muscle-ups. 11.04.54 seconds. That is your time to beat upper right-hand part of your screen. Belongs to Chandler Smith. Only four men in heat number one were able to get in inside of that 12-minute time cap. Yeah, when I look at body language, everything about Pat Vellner right now screaming confidence. He's feeling good with the pace that he's established, and he's going to be ready for these 20-bar muscle-ups. Vellner is in his final five calories. Now one calorie to go for the 2020 Rogue Invitational Champion, and Vellner maintaining his lead. 20-bar muscle-ups remaining. We'll keep an eye on the race between Medeiros and Garrard for second place. Vellner to work on his set of 20. How much of his hands can he keep on top of that for each one of those reps? Two and a break. Judge's hands in the air for both Roman Krennikov and Justin Medeiros. Medeiros is done. Krennikov is done. As is Sam Quant. And Ricky Garrard still has some work to do here on the skier. Vellner with about 16, now 15 reps to go. And this is interesting. Notice that Justin abandoned the grips on this back half of this workout here. This might be a key to helping him save his grip. Vellner trying to hold off Quant, Krennikov, and Medeiros, taking a quick break. Medeiros continuing to work. After a quick break, now Medeiros on the right side of your screen, hopping off again. People might think I'm crazy for saying this is going to save his grip, Sean, but when, when you're dealing with something that's wide in circumference already, that those grips that you're wearing actually increase the size of how it feels. And so with your skin closer to the apparatus, it allows you to hang on for bigger sets. Pat Vellner is inside 10 reps to go here. Now nine remaining for him as he looks to lock up an event win. Sam Quant is in second place just ahead of both Medeiros and Krennikov. And now a no rep for Pat Vellner. Justin Medeiros continuing to work. And he will break. Vellner is back up on the bar. Now Medeiros threatening to overtake Pat Vellner. He has five to go. With consistency here. These athletes have to remember to sit over the bar before they press out. That's what happens when they miss out the back. Vellner trying to hold off Justin Medeiros. Medeiros looks like he has about a rep lead on Pat Vellner. Two to go for your defending Rogue Invitational Champion. Final rep for Medeiros, he's gonna take a quick break, chalk his hands as Pat Vellner, I believe has two remaining. Medeiros is done and Justin Medeiros is going to win event two. With a couple seconds to spare, 100 points for your defending Rogue Invitational Champ. Now here comes Ricky Garrard. He will take second place in the heat, followed by Pat Valor, and now a race between Gubinson, Krennikov, and Quant. Quant is going to get in ahead of Gubinson and Krennikov. Now three men are left on the field. Saxon Pajic, Lazar Jukic, and Jason Hopper. Now Saxon Pajic is done. Lazar Jukic with a no rep. Jeffrey Adler was also still out there. So now three men left. Jukic, Adler, and Hopper. As Justin Medeiros 
who took fifth in the opening event, is going to follow that up with a first place finish here in event number two. Wow. What a way to start the day. The king of execution, Justin Benitez. Started towards the back of the pack in this event. It was the GHDs where he really made up a ton of ground. Yeah, it really pays to know yourself. And a lot of people watch our sport. They assume that we're amateurs out there just doing a lot of wild stuff. But we put in the time, we put in the volume to have those moments in competition. Send it down to Kiki Dixon, who is with your event two winner, Justin Medeiros. Congratulations on your event win, Justin. You came out the gate swinging. Obviously, you found out about that log this morning. How much did it change the dynamic of your bar muscle-ups? Oh, no, it changed it to a completely different workout, but... Man, like that stuff's so awesome. I mean, to come out at the Rogue Invitational and to get to see like new equipment, you got to figure it out on the fly. Like even playing fade field, there's no way anybody tried that before. So it was just super fun going out there and having fun and it was awesome to walk away with the win. Now concept two, you're familiar with that apparatus. You can opt for a higher stroke rate, little less power or more powerful slower strokes. What should you go for and why? Man, I just go right in the middle, try to go fast with the low stroke rate, and uh, hopefully it pays off. But yeah, it was a good workout. It paid off indeed. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, guys. Justin Medeiros kicking off his Friday with an event win, 11 minutes, .18 seconds, edging out Chandler Smith. Ricky Garrard is going to finish third for the second straight event. Pat Vellner winds up in fourth, followed by Sam Quant and Bjorgvin Carl Gumanson with Roman Krennikov coming in in seventh place. Overall standings now after two events, Medeiros and Garrard tied in points. Medeiros gets a tie break because of that event win. Chandler Smith is just 10 points back and it's Roman Krennikov and Bjorgvin Carl Gumanson rounding out the top five. Men are done, women. Coming up next here in event number two, Ski Bar. Stay with us, everybody. By concept two, it is Ski Bar. Yeah, and in this event, we've, we know we've got the 20 bar muscle ups. The women this time are gonna ski 32 calories. They're gonna follow it up with 80 GHD sit ups, back to the calorie for ski, and then of course, 20 bar muscle ups to finish. And it's gonna be a great test. I think this event is even different more challenging for the females is with the change of the circumference of the grip. Opening heat is underway. 20 bar muscle ups and then 32 calories on the skier. Oh yeah, we, we're, we're, see, we're, watching, we're watching sets be down already broken up into singles. Singles for the vast majority of the field out the gate. Carolyn Prevo in the middle of the screen with the blue top going with signals, as is Melon Engadez on the left side. And one thing to consider while, while everybody's watching this from home is that when we increase the diameter of this apparatus, you know, hand size matters. And, and when we compare male and females from a general perspective, of course, men just have typically a, a larger hand size. That allows them to keep their grip more firmly on top of the rig. That's why we see the vast majority of the field right now breaking them into singles. It's hard to link these reps together when your hands are moving in such a great distance each rep. Annie Thoris' daughter is in this heat. She is in lane number eight in the long light blue pants and light blue top. Her first individual competition since she was at the Rogue Invitational last year. She and her CrossFit Reykjavik team finished fourth overall at the CrossFit Games back in August. Great to see her back in individual competition. She finished second here at the Rogue Invitational in 2021. Yeah, and she was obviously an athlete that we wanted to keep our eye on coming out of the gate today because we know that she is ready to put everybody on notice that she is back on the individual scene. Thor's daughter is your leader right now ahead of Bailey Rogers, who comes in in second place overall. She took second place in that opening event. Carolyn Prevo 
also on the lead pace as well, along with Matilda Garns. Bailey Rogers, judge's hand is in the air down there in lane number one towards the upper left-hand part of your screen. And Annie Thor's daughter, judge's hand is in the air. And in lane four, Carolyn Prevost's judge's hand is in the air. Thor's daughter with three reps to go. There's something that can be extremely frustrating about our sport, which is the unknown and unknowable. But I'll tell you, that's the beauty in it. It's the ability to watch these athletes figure it out on the floor for the very first time. And that's what we're witnessing right now, is who can figure it out best to meet their capacity where it's at. Thor's daughter is done, and she will join Bailey Rogers on the skier. 32 calories to complete here. Now, Carolyn Prevo is onto the ski erg as well. There is Bailey Rogers making her first appearance here at the Rogue Invitational. And again, what we're watching, folks, is the key to having success on the ski is to send those hips back, drive the weight back through your heels, and allow it to be a hinge-based movement versus more than a squat-based movement, where a lot of times we'll see athletes in error dropping their hips into a squat position and then, unfortunately, blunting the ability to, to maximize and express power on the serve. Annie Thoris' daughter. Cranking away on those 32 calories at the 52 rep mark is when they will move to the GHDs. It's Thoris Daughter and Rogers continuing to lead here. The two of them neck and neck. Carolyn Prevo is solidly in third place with Matilda Garns right now in fourth. And we still have four or five women now back on the pull up bars. Half the field here in this opening heat has yet to get done with those 20 bar muscle ups. Danny Spiegel in lane six. Bottom right hand part of your screen now, right side of your screen just got up and over. That is her final rep, so she will now head to the skier. Annie Thor's daughter is done along with Bailey Rogers. Bailey Rogers, an accomplished Olympic lifter. Top only lifter in New Zealand in the 75 kilo weight class, competed at the Commonwealth Games and the Oceania Weightlifting Championships. He's been doing CrossFit since 2010. Yeah, and to understand that that's her background and to see the way that she performed in that run in event one, she, she's here to play. And both these athletes understand that they're not just racing simply their heat that's here, their peers that are out in this uh, heat on the floor, but they're also racing uh, the future ghosts of of Heat 2 coming out. So there's still urgency, even though a lot of the field is far be behind them. 80 reps to complete here. It's Annie Thoris out who continues to lead, but Bailey Rogers is staying right with her. Carolyn Prevo is now facing a little pressure from Matilda Garns for third. Rep for rep, we're seeing the same thing on the GHDs that we saw with the guys. We've got a few different styles, different setup positions. Most of the athletes like their hips free of the pad, which means their butt is just down on the back side of that pad. That's gonna help protect their spine, so when they go touch that riser, they're able to sit up without hyperextending their back. Five women on to the GHDs here. Bailey Rogers, Menon Anganes, Carolyn Prevo, Matilda Garns and Annie Thoris out there. Now here comes Danny Spiegel to join them. Approaching the seven minute mark, 12 minute time cap here. First of two heats for the women. You notice a break right there from Bailey. It's, it, for me, that's a trap. 
anytime I'm smoothly moving through GHD sit-ups, the moment that I pause, the lactate seems to just build in my belly and my quads. And that's something I try to avoid as best I can, whether it means slowing down, but whatever I can do to conserve energy without completely stopping. One hundred thirty two reps is what they need to complete. Andy Thoris daughter is getting close to that. Thoris daughter is now done. Annie Thoris daughter will be the first woman back to the skier. I didn't notice her pause not one time, Sean, there. She was moving steady on the same clip, same rhythm throughout all 80 of those GHD sit-ups, which is extremely impressive. Putting some distance between herself and Bailey Rogers, who's now trying to hold off Carolyn Prevo for second place in the heat. And Rogers is resting as Prevo continues to work. Rogers and Prebo now tied for second. Prebo in that blue shirt and white headband. And now Prebo is done. As in lane five, Ellie Turner is on to the skier. Now Turner, I think, is still on her way down. So Ellie Turner way in the back here is one of the last women done with those 20 bar muscle ups. This is Turner's first set of 32 calories, and now she is moving to the GHDs. Ellie Turner getting left behind here in this opening heat. Annie Thorstadter on the right side continues to lead here. 184 total repetitions, and Thorstadter is inching closer to that with every pull. This is a big part of this for Annie is urgency, constant urgency. While she's leading her heat, Significantly, it's about understanding that she is going to be setting the time to beat as long as she can stay with this rhythm. Five final calories now for Annie Thoris' daughter. She's got to get to 164, then she'll head back to that wooden pull-up bar for her 20 final bar muscle-ups. And I'm going to tell you the messed up part about this test here is that Every movement you experience is your abdominals, it's your lats. All your arms are going to be over your head in all three of these things. So as Annie comes back to prepare herself for this first bar muscle-up, she's got to make sure it's a good one. You want to start with great momentum knowing that there's 20 reps left between you and the end. Solar Stoddard taking a moment to shake the hands out. Now she gets to work. First rep of 20 is down. And that's important. A good rep right out of the gate can set the tone. Well, there are still two women who have yet to complete their first set of 20. It's Andrea Solberg in lane two, and then Annika Greer in lane 10. Thoris out now with a no rep. Now, Bailey Rogers is done with her ski, and she has moved back to the wooden pull-up bar. Here comes Carolyn Prevo now in third. Yeah, and Prevo was able to make up a good bit of that ground through those GHG sit-ups where she gained a bit of that lead back, but then Rogers overtook her again on that ski. Now we're going to get to watch them go head-to-head -head and rep for rep. Hey, Thorstadter continues to lead, chipping away at these final 20-bar muscle-ups. We are approaching 11 minutes, a 12-minute time cap here. So likely that... Just None of the women in this heat will finish this Annie event inside the allotted time. As we mentioned, it's a bit of a different challenge for the ladies than we're seeing for the men. This new apparatus presenting all kinds of problems. Prevo is... Looked like she may have moved into a tie with Annie Thoris' daughter now. Prebo in that blue shirt. Her blue shirt. Through 170 to 184 wrestle. Carolyn Prebo. Inside 30 seconds to go. Has now a one rep lead on Annie Thoris' daughter. 
Yeah, they're going back and forth. It's rep for rep here. And Prevo has a much greater cycle rate. She's dropping every rep, but notice it's a quick return, and she's right back up for the next one. Five seconds to go before we hit the time cap. Annie Thorstad are taking a break. If Prevo can get that, I don't think she's going to, but Carolyn Prevo right now, unofficially with a one rep lead over Annie Thoris' daughter. 10 reps shy of completing the event. What a great comeback for Prevo there at the end. What a great push. 174 of the 184 reps completed for Carolyn Prevo, who was able to catch Annie Thoris' daughter in the latter part of this event. And I'm sure she's making all of her students back home real happy and proud. Throwing some punches there late does Carolyn Prevo. And she will have to wait and see if her score will be good enough to put her towards the top in this event. So unofficially, it's Carolyn Prevo who comes 10 reps shy of completing the event. Annie Thoris' daughter, one rep behind her. Bailey Rogers winds up in third place with Manon Anganez and Matilda Garns rounding out the top five. And Danny Spiegel doing some good work to wind up in sixth place in that heat. Good look at Dell Diamond for the second straight year, the host site of the Rogue Invitational. We saw the strongmen kick things off earlier with the Tower of Power. The Roga Coaster is out there in left field as well. But right now, we are dealing with the second event for the CrossFit individuals. It is Ski Bar presented by Concept2, and this one has been all about that wooden pull-up bar. It has. It's turned into a workout that is extremely grip-intensive, and really your ability to perform the unknown and unknowable. It's really about how you respond directly there on the field to what you're presented with in the, in the moment. We know these athletes had a chance to actually experiment with them in the warm-up, but it's all about how it feels out there when you get out there to play. You've watched two heats of men, one heat of women. How, if at all, does that affect your keys to the event here? Well, it affects it just a little bit because now I, I understand that it's certainly a gut check for these athletes. It's going gonna, it's gonna to affect their midline tremendously. Um, they're going to, the abs and the hip flexors are going to be tested in every aspect of this. But the grip and rip is really about that new wooden apparatus that's out there for the bar muscle ups. They've got to figure out a way to navigate keeping their hands on top of it to link consecutive reps or they've got to settle for singles. The women who will be taking part in this second and final heat are now ready and they will take their positions on the starting line. Danielle Brandon will be in lane number five. She comes in as the leader after taking the event win yesterday in Texas Trail. Yeah, and we talk about momentum. Danielle Brandon started this thing uh, right off the, the top of a roller coaster, right? Like, I spoke with her coach earlier, and he said their goal was to come to this competition and gain more experience and have a good time to learn. So to start with the, an event win, that, that says something. Danielle definitely, I think, is going to learn a thing or two about herself, speaking of that, with, with coming into this week, Sean. We, we know that she had her best game performance ever. Um, we know that there are particular things that she's working on as an athlete. A lot of times, she's going to be leaning into training those strength and those odd objects that, of course, we'll see here. But I'm really interested to see how she responds to a first place and how she responds to being the leader. Jacqueline Dahlstrom is your leader right now, but plenty of women are through nine of those 20 reps. Not a lot of separation here early, at least, on this opening set of 20 bar muscle ups. Yeah, and I think we're at, we're at this stage. After these ladies watch the first heat take the field, they understand these first 20 reps are almost like hurry up and wait. Don't put yourself in a bad situation with no reps or losing psychological momentum and allow yourself to build some confidence throughout the workout after you finish these 20. Emma Lawson has five to go. Ariel Lowen, Cara Saunders, 
Amanda Barnhart. There is Cara Saunders. Saunders finished seventh at the games this past August. Jacqueline Dahlstrom in lane one. The all white. It's a lot of tape to match her all white outfit. As Emma Lawson in lane seven was one of the first women to the ski erg. Also, Ariel Lowen got there just about the same time. It's Dahlstrom in lane one. Cara Saunders. Here comes Daniel Brandon on the ski erg. Emma Lawson. Ariel Lowen and Amanda Barnhart are on the ski erg. Laura Horvath in the background there in the black pants is still working her way through the bar muscle up. She has four reps to go. Raftus and Magawa are still on that opening set of 20 as well. We get a good shot of Ariel Lowen here just executing with a very smooth stroke on the ski erg, trying to find that happy medium of her stroke rate, but also pulling with some power. Ariel Lowen gave birth in 2019, took a couple years off, came back in 2021, went to the Granite Games semifinal, and said all she wanted to do was go compete and get her nameplate for the new house. She wound up winning it and qualifying for the CrossFit Games that year. You know, when you share a story like that, it kind of hurts my feelings, Sean. <laughs> I didn't really ever show up to a competition with the intention just to show up, and, and, and I certainly didn't ever win any on accident. But I really think that showcases her focus and her ability to show up when the lights are bright, and also the advantage sometimes to just showing up to do your best with free expectations and what that can do for an athlete. Gabby McGowan in the light blue top and long black pants was the final athlete to the skier. At 52 reps, that is when they will move on, and Ariel Lowen is now done, and she is heading to the GHDs. That is Emma Lawson putting the finishing touches on her 32 calorie ski. She will join Lowen on those 80 reps on the GHT. Now here comes Cara Saunders. Here comes fan favorite Cara Saunders. Amanda Barnhart, bottom of your screen, onto the GHDs. She is in fourth place right now in the heat. And there is Cara Saunders, who made her CrossFit Games debut back in 2012. She had a string of top 10 finishes from 2015 to 2020, when the worst she did at the games was eighth place. Of course, had that really close finish, the closest in history, to Tia Toomey back in 2017. Yeah, the legends haven't taken the field yet, but we're watching a living legend right there execute on the field. She is absolutely a class act and representing for the moms out there. Ariel Lowen continuing to lead through 84 now of the 184 total repetitions. 132 reps is what she needs to get to before she heads back down the field. Daniel Brandon has also gotten to the GHD. She currently sits in fifth place in the heat. Here comes Laura Horvath. Now Alexis Raptis and Gabby Magawa. Gawa trying to follow up her event one placing. Took third in the Texas Trail with a good showing here. And right now towards the back of the pack in this second and final heat. No woman was able to complete this event inside the 12 minute time cap in the opening heat. So the score to beat is 174 reps from Carolyn Prevo. Yeah, and Laura Horvath still has a lot of work to do, but I'll, I'll say that when it comes to cadence and pace on these GHD sit-ups, she has something going on similar to what we saw in Madero's, where it's almost every three reps for her is only two reps for those ladies to her left or to her right. So she's got a great cadence, and I think she clearly understands this is the movement in this workout where she has an opportunity to make up some ground. Laura Horvath right now in eighth place in the heat, trying to track down Emma McQuaid. Florida has a ways to go before that happens. Ariel Lowen continuing to lead now through 125 of the 
184 reps of her judge's hand is in the air. She's towards the middle of your screen. She's in the long black pants. Turquoise is top, and now she is done. So Ariel Lowen making the turn and heading back to the skier. Kara Saunders spot. judge's hand is in the air as well. Emma Lawson. Lawson sitting in second place behind Lowen. Here comes Kara Saunders. Past the seven minute mark. There is Emma Lawson. 17 years old, made her individual CrossFit Games debut back in August, actually wore the leader's jersey at one point. Yeah, and I'll say, I, there, it, was an, it was an odd experience times with her with the white jersey on. I saw her, maybe only saw the back of her running a couple times, and I was like, Man, she kind of she looks like Tia with that jersey on. <laughs> We're not used to seeing other people wear that jersey. Ariel Lowen, right side, continuing to lead. Saunders and Lawson are fighting for second. Amanda Barnhart sits in fourth, followed by Jacqueline Dahlstrom and Emma McQuaid. Now Laura Horvath has gotten to the ski erg. Horvath trying to work her way up the standings here. She has managed to close the gap between herself and Emma McQuaid. Alexis Raptis and Gabby Magawa, the only two women who have yet to get to their second and final 32 calorie ski. The judges hand in the air for Ariel Lowen, continuing to maintain that lead she built on the bar muscle ups, and she looks to be the first woman back for her final set of 20. Yeah, she's done a great job executing on this skier, driving her hips back, pulling with power, dropping her chest all the way on each and every repetition so that she's not bleeding out extra energy or unneeded energy with her upper body to save it for this moment right here. Ariel Lowen is well ahead of Carolyn Prevo's time. Notice how far back she is on her stall mat there that she's jumping from. This allows her to glide into her rep doing singles which if any of the spectators out there were watching this and understand and have gotten their first bar muscle up, this is often how you want to open up each and every set to make that first rep your most easy rep. So she's taking full advantage to the situation right now where all she knows all her competitors are also doing singles. And we need to wish Ariel Lowen a happy birthday today. Of course we do. She's trying to start today with a dub. It's her birthday. Happy birthday, Ariel. Three women on their final set of 20. Now make that four. Amanda Barnhart is there as well. It's Emma Lawson and Cara Saunders. And now Danielle Brandon is getting set to start her final set of 20. 14 reps remain for Ariel Lowen. Now 13. Lawson is now tied with Lowen. Yeah, we've noticed the last couple. Ariel got hit with a no rep. Right as I wished her happy birthday, so sorry if I did something. Um, and, and Emma's been tremendously consistent from the moment she got to the rig. 174 reps is the score to beat. Lawson's going to track that down, as is Ariel Lowen. Cara Saunders has a really good chance as well. Now 90 seconds to go. Emma Lawson had a great start to her competition, finished fifth in Texas Trail yesterday. Strong showing here could put her towards the top of the overall standings, but still plenty of events to go after this, but not a bad way to start your competition for Emma Lawson, who is now taking the lead from Ariel Lowen as we have a minute to go before we hit the 12 minute time cap. Seven reps remain for Emma Lawson. Yeah, now there's, a, there's an element there of, of, of competitive nature, but, but tone the line with your threshold. You can't get hit with a no rep. It could be costly at this time with so much, so little time left. The only thing Emma Lawson needs to be concerned with right now is keeping Saunders and Lowen in her rear view mirror. She has the top score. Now four reps to go to try and finish this event inside 30 seconds before we hit the time cap. Yeah, I love this, and they're going to demand it of her. It's, it, 
They're, they're pushing the whole field. Everybody competing together is going to get pushed, pushed to that 184. Let's see if someone can do it. 15 to go. Lawson with one rep left. Now eight seconds. Lawson will get it. Won't get across the finish line. But Emma Lawson is going to win event number two. Great victory for the next gen CrossFitter right there. The flex and the wave goodbye to the rest of the field as she picks up 100 points. Gets through all 184 repetitions, but not able to get across the finish line. It didn't matter because the entire field was behind her. So Emma Lawson, a great start to her competition. A fifth place yesterday, a first today. Kara Saunders finishes a rep ahead of Ariel Lowen. That'll be good enough for 95 points. Second place finish for Kara Saunders. Ariel Lowen, Amanda Barnhart, and Jacqueline Dahlstrom. Rounding out the top five in that event. But Carolyn Prevo will tie for fifth with her score from heat number one. But once again, it comes down to that final set of 20 bar muscle ups. Ariel Lowen, the lead throughout most of this event. But when they got back to the wooden pull up bar for the final time, that's where Lawson made her move. Yeah, it was a lot of Lowen right out of the gate. And she looked like she was poised to take this event, to be honest with you. When, we, when she even got to the apparatus early, she looked fantastic. But it was Lawson's consistency and her grit at the end of this test that allowed her to have success and take that win. Let's go down to Kiki Dixon with Emma Lawson. Congratulations on your event win here today. Now you were able to practice with the log earlier on, but how different was practice from reality here? Uh, well, I mean, adrenaline always helps <laughs> when you're out here. So back there, I was actually struggling quite a bit, but. Um, yeah, the adrenaline really helps. You just kind of got to go for it and see what happens. Now, aside from the log, which was the surprise today, was there anything else that surprised you about the workout with this combination of movements? Uh, the GHGs were a lot harder than I thought. I mean, coming off the ski, especially when you're trying to go that hard on the ski, uh, it's pretty taxing on the core. Um, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. Event win for Emma Lawson, and that puts her on top of the overall leaderboard. Two events in, Danielle Brandon is now 20 points back. Jacqueline Dahlstrom sits in third with a five-point cushion over Bailey Rogers, and it's Emma McQuaid who is in fifth with 145 total points. Action continues here at the 2022 Rogue Invitational from the Dell Diamond in Round Rock, Texas. Thanks for being with us, everybody as the legends are set to take the field.